Greetings! Welcome back to the Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel. Today we're going to do something a little bit different from what we've done on the, the channel previously, and we're going to talk a bit about fishing. Now, this is still a homesteading channel. This is not going to turn into a, into, you know, a, a sports and recreation channel, but hunting and fishing are absolutely traditional and honorable parts of homestead economy as a way to go out and supplement the family income with some meat from the wilds. And these are things that, can, that are often turned into fairly expensive pursuits, but they don't have to be. I want to talk a little bit today about tying flies, and then I'm going to do a few individual segments on how to tie some simple flies. This is a beginner's series for fly tying. Um, fly tying and fly fishing have this aura of large sums of money and great complexity. And that's actually literally deliberate. We'll get to that in a second. It's also an insult to the history of the sport. Right? So fly tying and fly fishing started in multiple locations around the world at multiple times. You have the Tenkara fishing in Japan. You have the Scottish tradition and British tradition of fly fishing. There's records of it in um, Rome and Roman peasantry doing this. There, we know that there's quite a few people around the Arctic interaction sphere were making feathered lures for fish. And these were simple lures something to hook the fish attached to some bit of fluff from some animal that they just ate or raised on their farm. And a lot of fish were caught with that. It was a simple, um, bare bones way of fishing without needing large nets and boats and expensive equipment. Okay? And it still can be that. It still can be that. This aura of fly fishing as a gentleman's sport, which is really just code for made stupidly expensive, is comes from um, the height of the British Empire where the British uh, gentlemen, i.e. people with the desire to throw around um, conspicuous examples of consumerism for no other reason than to do it, uh, took this peasant sport and decided that if they were going to get into it, it had to be expensive, literally. So they went to the shops that were selling hats, women's hats, those big fluffy feathery hats. And this was a huge thing in the Victorian period where, you know, the, the British Empire was at its height. It was expansive. It encompassed the tropical regions. So people were going around the world, shooting beautiful tropical birds, taking their feathers and putting them in women's hats and charging an arm and a leg for them because it was fancy and exotic and different. Right? So the people that wanted to fish and make fishing deliberately more expensive went and made excuses to take the most expensive feathers and... Um, tie them into flies to fish with for no reason other than to make it needlessly expensive. Okay? The ultimate example of this is a classic salmon fly called the blue chatter. The blue chatter is a rare blue bird from the tropics. And it required an entire, an entire skin of blue chatter to tie this fly. And that was an investment like on the order of a year's earnings for a peasant in the day to tie one fishing fly. And that was deliberate. People would buy that fly just so that they could hold their fly box open and show off that. Like the person who comes into the store and fans out a wad of 20s just so that you think that they're somebody. Right? It was needlessly expensive for the purpose of being needlessly expensive. And fly fishing still has that aura to it. It also has the aura of, of being thought of as complicated. But if you look at the um, Japanese expression of fly fishing, the Tenkara fishing, it's a bamboo rod, fairly long, like head to head high, long rod, with a length of line attached to it, the length of the rod, and nothing else. Just a heavy line tied to the tip with a bit of a leader, you attach your fly to that, and then it's just flinging over dabbling it in pools, it's a technique called dapping, and 
it produces a lot of fish. So it can be as simple as some feathers from the chicken that you ate last night and a single piece of line attached to a rod. The very first trout I caught on a fly rod was a little, um, I was trying to go for a black ant and I tied it just entirely out of some of my mother's black sewing thread wrapped around a hook with a couple of little sprigs on for um, legs and I fished it on my little kids, I was 8, 10 at the time, fished it just with a little piece of, of line stretched out from my uh, little like Mickey Mouse style push button rod with as much line as I could manage which was just the length of the rod. I was literally 10 car fishing without realizing that's what it should be called. And I caught fish on it. Right? My little childhood self. So it can be extremely simple and it can be extremely inexpensive way to get food for yourself in your homestead. Okay? That doesn't mean that I never tie complicated flies, right? This is a very, I'm pulling out some bigger things so that you can see them well on the camera. Like this is a, a very, this minnow has a lot to it. It's minnow imitation, right? This one is jointed, jointed body in that minnow imitation, right? There's a, a jointed body um, damselfly nymph there, okay? Um, Giant darner dragonfly nymphs, also a jo uh, jointed body, right? So there are some complicated flies in here, but you don't need complicated flies to catch fish, okay? Um, I did an experiment, this is quite a few years ago, where I started with basically a small version of this. And I was doing some uh, bass and pan fish fishing in a lake where near where I grew up that had a lot of crappies in it and was experimenting with this and I went down and I made the most accurate complicated all the right colors all the right spots everything to it full size profile everything minnow imitation and I caught a bunch of fish and I thought you know what what happens if I take this off so I went home and I tied some simpler ones and I caught just as many fish with them and I went home and I took some more stuff off. That's the simpler ones. I still caught just many fish with them. I went home, I took some stuff off, and I, till I, I ended up boiling it down to just one material that worked as well or better as this most complex thing that I had produced. And that final fly is this guy. Little bead head, red thread, and that is just Christmas tinsel. And that will slay those sockelets a lot, <laughs> right? Very, very, very simple. Okay? You could actually assemble that with nothing but super glue if you wanted to. Okay? So, it can be just this simple. It can be this complicated, it can be full dress salmon flight complicated. Or, it can be this simple. And this is what I want to talk about here, being true to the actual ancestry origin and tradition of fly fishing as a simplified, inexpensive way for a family to put a little bit of meat on the table. So if you are interested in that, go give this video a thumbs up and stay tuned because I'm going to do a series of videos where I tie some next level simple flies, starting with one like this. I'll see you there.